Anyone who's interested in old saxophones is aware of the Selmer Super Sax, the SSS logo on the instrument. It has become synonymous with the octave mechanism that was introduced at the same time, which resembled a cigar cutter that clips the end off your cigar. So the saxophone became known as the cigar cutter. Now there was a lot of variations in introduction and distribution right now. So let's talk just about altos. At about 14,000 serial number, this is in the spring of 1931, there were some major developments that went on. One of the key weaknesses of early saxophones was physically the weakness of the neck receiver. It tended to split. So a much more robust neck receiver was built. It also featured an integrated lyre holder and it was in general a vast improvement over the previous. They also introduced a removable pant guard, a triangular device, which is really helped in keeping the, the, your pants out of the left hand bell keys and a number of other improvements. So this happened right around 14,000 for the altos. With the improvements of the super sax alto, the Selmer saxophone really was competing in the American market. It was making its place known. So some of the more flamboyant designs, like the big, very visible triangular uh, pant guard design, was really something that was getting noticed. For all you collectors out there, the very first batch of cigar cutter altos, about 70 instruments in total, they were produced with all the features but without the actual SSS stamp. So dig around and you might find one of those really rare and exciting saxophones. Starting right after that, the SSS stamp was put on and this continued in the American market from about 14,000 to about 17,000. In the European market, however, the cigar cutter went from 14,000 to about 18,900, right to the beginning of the radio improved. So we'll see some differences in the markets. What happened at 17,000 for the altos in the American market is they introduced a second octave key. I think it's a great mechanism. It features two almost knuckles that work together it's the very first iteration of the swivel bar concept of an octave key mechanism, which has become standard worldwide today. So from 17,000 to 19,000, for the American market only, we feature what we call the geared octave mechanism. At around 14,000, the tenor received most of the upgrades of the alto, and in general looked much like a super sax. But for some reason, the tenor did not receive the, the SSS stamp at this time. So from 14,000 to 17,000, the tenor maintained the old octave mechanism with most of the new improvements, and I call it a pre-super, because it's essentially a super, but it doesn't have the actual stamp. At 17,000, this is where it gets interesting, the American market received the first true Selmer super tenors with the geared octave mechanism. But Europe received these same tenors with the cigar cutter octave mechanism. So again, for collectors out there, if you're looking for a true Selmer tenor cigar cutter, only about 180 were made. So keep your eyes out, mostly in Europe, and you're likely to find one after a long search.